Hey guys, it's time for another Pearson Workholding Q&A, and in this week's episode, we're talking pallet systems. Okay, in this week's episode, can my part overhang the pallet? Or can I make an oversized pallet and not get chatter? Should I buy the mini or pro pallet system? And is the PPS robust enough to take some very aggressive cuts? Good questions. Number one, can my part overhang the pallet? And can I make an oversized pallet uh, and, and get chatter if I'm machining way out on the edge? Now, let me back up. If you wanna make your own pallets, you can. We have a hardware kit all you do is machine whatever material you have around. Very popular, very popular with our international customers because aluminum, as far as I know, is in every country and it's a, it takes a lot of money to ship it. Like for example, to Australia, uh, very popular are our pallet kits, our hardware kits. Um, okay, so if you're making your own um, or you have a part that overhangs, you can, um, you will get chatter if you're hanging out beyond 16, 18 inches, probably like 14 inches in the width of, in the narrow um, side. But I'll say this, finish passes is where you do all the cleanup. So I would say that if you're taking some aggressive cuts far from the base, oversized part or pallet, yes, you will see some chatter because of the overhang, the cantilever type uh, nature of it. Um, but a good finish pass will clean that right up. Um, and so I wouldn't compromise there. Next question, should I buy the Pro or Mini? Well, we've done a video about this. We'll uh, add a card and maybe um, a link in the description below. Um, but furthermore, uh, for those that have watched the video and come back with more questions, uh, price is not usually the issue. It's capability. Will my... Uh, maybe right now they're, they have a low horsepower machine, maybe they're working like a Tormach or a mini mill. Um, the, the mini is perfect for now, but when I get that VF or that Deuce on DNM or, or that DMG, when I put it in, will my pallet come off? The answer is no. Uh, mini is plenty um, rigid, robust, has a high enough holding power. You're never gonna rip that part off. You would probably pull a part out of the mini clamps or break a tool before you rip the pallet off or saw any type of movement. Now, the Pro Pallet system base is even more robust. If you look at the design of it, it has a cast iron core in which the locking components and the two pins, the round and diamond pins, are all held in that. It's still very robust, but that aluminum carrier um, is just a way for it to carry the cast iron components that are very thermally stable. Now, if you look at vice design historically, um, the mentality of a machinist is you think, well, it's gotta be all cast iron for uh, dampening and you just want it rigid. Well, keep in mind that vices are incredibly old technology where castings were just the most efficient way to make some complex shape. Also, vices, the typical vice, if you look at like a, um, an original Kurt vice or something like that, they're always trying to break themselves. So when you crank that vice handle, the screw is pushing the sliding jaw forward. It's trying to split in half. So you do need a big piece of ductile iron to resist the forces of it trying to destroy itself. Now, that mentality of cast iron is what you need for dampening, that is not the case. With a cast iron core that's thermally stable, being uh, affixed by how many, uh, we have 10, uh, I think they're 3, 8, 16 bolts holding that down from the bottom side on a hard anodized aluminum carrier bolted to a table. Now here's the key thing, with four toe clamps, what we're achieving is transfer of energy from the cut into the part through the pallet system or through the base through the, the or through the pallet through the base and into the machine table ultimately to the casting 
and then the ground. That is the flow of energy. When you have those four toe clamps, there's so much surface area contact between the force of uh, the machining forces to the table that um, the old mentality of you need cast iron for dampening, that's not true. You're transferring that en energy into the casting of the machine and ultimately into the floor. So when we talk about rigidity of the system, both systems work just fine. And final question, is the PPS robust enough to take some aggressive cuts? Now, I've kind of covered this in the first two questions, but I'll add this. If you are taking really aggressive cuts with the PPS, most likely you're gonna to have to build in some very robust clamping. Robust clamping means that your pallet size is, um, or I, I suppose the density of your fixtures is going to be a little less dense because you might have multiple clamps or bigger clamps. So uh, what's common is going to larger pallets to accommodate more parts. Now I always say work with the smallest pallet possible just for um, the weight issue and the human factor of loading and unloading. The only time you wanna to go to a larger pallet is if your part absolutely won't fit or if you're right on the brink of maybe, man, if I just had another quarter inch or half inch or even one inch, I could add another row of parts or fit in another second or third part. That's the only time you wanna go bigger. And, um, but yeah, it is definitely robust enough to hold part, to hold pallets, to take as aggressive as a cut as you could with a vise. So that's it for this episode. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing. We got a lot more of these Q&A episodes coming down the pipe. Now, if you have a question about the system that wasn't answered, put it in the comments section. We'll either answer it there or save it for a future episode. So until then, go innovate your production.